ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on May 1st, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time fail, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email for a backup audio connected to the meeting. Uh, there will be opportunities for public comment related to Article 5. Um, and so if you're attending by Zoom and you want to participate, please raise your hand when we start that session. And I will try to alternate, recognizing there's a lot of people here um, that wish to be heard that are here in person. So with that, I will move on to warrant article hearings, articles for review, and this is the continued hearing for Article 5, resolution for a ceasefire proclamation. And again, just to let people know, um, we heard from a number of people at the last meeting, we received a number of emails that everything received through noon today has been posted to our agenda page. Uh, what we receive after that through the meeting, we will post uh, tomorrow. We have a time limit here because of town meeting and we share the Zoom. So I talked to Mr. Salmon before the, uh, the meeting. What my intention is to do is it's 635 now. We will go at least to 715, but we will not go past 730 for public comment. We will then have a period of time for the board to discuss the article. So with that, with the continued hearing, um, Simon, is it Simon Proc? Yes. Yep, you're first. And, and just to remind people, you, um, it's a three minute limit on the presentation. Once you go hit three minutes or shortly after, I will ask you to wrap up. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Simon Proct. I've been a resident of Arlington for the past nine years. Uh, I'm here to express my opposition to the warrant article. I've participated in all the HRC sessions as well as the prior select board. I understand that you might be holding great weight in your decision today, but I wanted to address some of the arguments that have been made. One of the things that you heard is around the fact that this proclamation could be a unifying agenda for our town. But so far, it's been extremely divisive people speaking passionately on both sides of the aisle, nobody really hearing each other or changing their minds about this whatsoever. The one thing that has come up from any group that's been participating is that there's been a rise and increase in hate crimes in Arlington. And it's unfortunate we've had the time and resources dedicated to discuss a conflict 4,000 miles away, but we haven't shared those same resources in fighting hate right here in Arlington, regardless of whether it's anti-Semitism or Islamophobia. Others have argued that this is still relevant to Ar Arlington because $700,000 of our tax money goes to Israel. As a select board that reviews our budget, I'm sure you know that Arlington doesn't send tax money to Israel or any foreign country. It's probably they're talking about the federal government. The federal government does send money to Israel as well as dozens of other countries, many of whom receive a lot more than Israel. For instance, Ukraine, $150 billion to date. The U.S. is the largest exporter of weapons in the world, 45% of all weapons sales, over 100 different countries. My point is, is if the litmus test that you guys will he have hearings and proclamations about conflicts that involve U.S. money or weapons, we're going to be here for a very, very long time. I've also heard that if you don't support this, that somehow it's immoral or that you're complicit. 
I can't find anything farther from the truth. I don't relish in any civilian casualties. I seek peace to any conflict. But your job is here in Arlington to promote an agenda that helps us all residents. And that's an anti-hate agenda. And we met with the AHRC as the Jewish community back in November and proposed concrete steps to battle hate in our schools, to work with our police and in our communities. And I think that that is much more meaningful than a proclamation that objectively will not change this conflict in any shape or form. People who disagree can contact their congressional representatives in Washington who actually decide these matters. And I hope that you make the right decision. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Andrew, I'm sorry if, if I mispronounce the name. That's okay. That happens a lot. So. <laughs> My name is Andrew Joglakar, and I've lived in Arlington for over 25 years. I'm here tonight to connect dots, if you will, between two of my very important concerns. One is that I'm gravely concerned about the climate crisis and the future of the planet. The other is that I'm also very deeply touched by the conflict between Israel and Palestine. In fact, the war in Gaza has touched many lives in Arlington, and the devastation there has been deeply upsetting to many residents of Arlington, such as myself. Moreover, residents of Arlington, with a strong emotional connection to that region, have felt unsafe and um, felt that they are not welcome in our community. Um, you'll agree that humanity needs to address the climate crisis together as an existential threat to the planet. Towards that goal, many countries have a net zero action plan. Uh, for our part, you, the select board, voted in favor of a declaration of climate emergency in 2021, which was also voted favorably by the town meeting members. Um, our town has a net zero action plan, and as a town, we are committed to promote and encourage climate action by other governmental authorities. So I ask you, as I ask myself, where does the relentless bombing and weaponizing in Gaza fit into any of these net zero action plans? And the simple answer is it doesn't. As bombs fall, Gaza dies. As the seas rise and the forests burn, humanity dies. And so I say, let Gaza live and let humanity live. Please, it is your business and it is your responsibility to connect these dots for me as well as for all the Arlington residents. Voting in favor of the ceasefire proclamation endorsed by the Arlington Human Rights Commission is not about taking sides or condemning one side over another. It is in fact a vote in favor of the, a livable future for humanity. And so I strongly urge you to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Palestine and Israel. Do it because it is the right thing to do for all of us and for humanity. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, David Pearson was next on the list. There's, there's one more name after Mr. Pearson. Is David Pearson here tonight? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Excuse me. Arrives, we'll, we'll go back. Okay. And there was one, one person on Zoom. Um, Arfi Jayanta? Okay. I see him, Okay. Hi, can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Um, so thanks for the time. I want to speak in favor of the ceasefire resolution. I could not see anything wrong for demanding it. It's nothing but pro-humanity to demand for a cease of genocide, to stop killing innocent civilians in both sides. Israel and its forces shall immediately stop its violent act towards um, harming and starving Palestinians, and Hamas shall stop targeting unarmed Israelis. Israel to release Palestinian hostages or detainees in its prisons, and Hamas to release 
Israeli hostages. These are steps towards reconciliation and sustainable long-lasting peace for generations to come. Um, this resolution is nothing but to support peace in the Middle East and, our, and Arlington comprised of people coming from all around the world. And we want to also support diversity of thoughts here. I just cannot see how long lasting peace can be achieved without the presence of justice and two or multiple group of people working together and support a ceasefire. Let me remind you of what happened since October 7, 12, uh, 1200 Israelis killed by Hamas, at least 34,000 Palestinians are killed by Israel's, with at least 70% of them are women and children in the name of so, uh, self-defense. Starvation is prevalent and people are at the brink of man-made famine. Children died of extreme malnutrition. And can you imagine children screaming because of hunger? And at some point they even stop crying, not because the hunger doesn't hurt anymore, but because they do not have the slightest energy to cry their heart out because the extreme pain of hunger. And I'm as a mother and my heart just cannot stop shattering every day knowing this ongoing atrocity keeps happening with, un with unforeseeable end. And we Americans are complicit, we sponsor this. Um, look, I condemn the October 7th attack by Hamas. Equally, I condemn the ongoing massacres of Palestinians by Israelis that has been going on for more than 200 days. So at what point should we say enough is enough? And I think it will be another history, historic leg legacy of Arlingtonians um, with its support to humanity. We have supported a lot of humanitarian causes before, and this one is just no different. I remember someone asked, why would we care about this specific war? Why not Sudan, Congo, Yemen, Ukraine, etc.? I support ceasefire of all wars. I support the cease of harms towards civilians in all of this jurisdiction. But the current atrocities in Gaza is particularly important because our country is complicit by sending weapons, offensive weapons and military aid to enable these ongoing massacres in gross violation of international law. I echo uh, what someone said earlier, we need to do what is, what is right. And I think it is the right thing to do to call for a ceasefire, even if it, it only change a slightest thing. Excuse at me, least you, excuse me you're just over three minutes, so if you could wrap up, wrap yeah, up please. I'm done with it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm all set, thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we'll come back to the line here. Next person. Hello. Um, my name is Haitham Bakir. Um, my father is Palestinian and grew up in a refugee camp near Ramallah in the West Bank. My grandparents were made refugees during the Nakba from two small towns near Yaffa that no longer exist. My mother's from Vermont, and I've been living in Arlington for five years now. I love this town. Um, my brother and I were born in Jerusalem, despite being born in the land of our father and ancestors going back centuries. We were denied residence by the Israeli authorities that control every single aspect of Palestinian lives and governance. The last seven months have been the most painful of my life. Seeing my family in Ramallah even, in even more danger than usual, wondering if it's safe to wear my kafia wondering if, it, if it's even safe to talk about being Palestinian. I'm glad to say that both within Arlington and my wider community, I have found empathy, support, and hope. While that comforts me, it does nothing to help those who are murdered daily, not just in the last 207 days, but for the last 76 years. My anguish is nothing compared to the fear and suffering of those still living in Palestine, and especially Gaza, at the hands of the Israeli government and the settlers. Being Palestinian means that despite decades of occupation, apartheid, collective punishment, and dehumanization, we still dream of a future where all of us, no matter whether we are Palestinian or Israeli, Jewish, Christian, or Muslim, live together in peace with equal rights and self-determination for all. And why does this matter to Arlington? Israel has been murdering innocent Palestinians with our weapons, with our funding, and our blessing. It's our tax dollars funding the, ma funding the massacre of 35,000 plus innocents in Gaza. By the time this is debated and voted on, 
that has, uh, and it's already been almost unanimously endorsed by the H AHRC, several hundred more people will have died. For, from Arlington alone, an estimated 700,000 tax dollars goes to support Israel's military annually. As my friend said, that's not directly coming from Arlington, but that's the amount that we can uh, extrapolate. For Massachusetts, it's around $130 million, which could fund 45,000 children to receive free or low-cost health care for a year. Despite all the polls, protests, letters, and speeches showing that the majority of demand a ceasefire across the political spectrum, our government is still providing the bombs that rain on Gaza and the political and economic protection to continue this genocide. We desperately need our elected representatives at all levels to amplify our voices to our congressional delegation and President Biden to stop this. Um, do we want to be complicit in this? I certainly hope that the answer would be no. And voting for a ceasefire is voting for life, peace, and equality for all. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Walter Johnson. I have lived in Arlington for 11 years. I understand from the hearings of the AHRC that the question of jurisdiction is a point of uncertainty in the conversations surrounding this resolution. And so I want to begin by addressing that. It is fair to ask whether or not the town of Arling has standing to pass resolutions concerning events that are happening thousands of miles away. I want simply to begin by invoking the International Court of Justice's finding of January the 26th which found that there was substantive, if not finally dispositive, evidence that Israel's action in Gaza constituted a genocide and ordered Israel to take immediate action to ameliorate the threat of mass starvation. No such action has occurred. While the findings of the International Court of Justice are legally binding under inter international law, there are few mechanisms capable of enforcing them, either generally or in the present case. They rely upon people and public opinion to t achieve their purpose. They are, that is to say, all of our concern if we believe that there should be a, such a thing as international law and human rights. It is on these grounds that I urge you to bring Arlington into alignment with emerging direction of international law by calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and the return of the Israeli hostages held there. Apart from the use of mass starvation as a weapon of war, which has been widely condemned throughout the world, apart from the deliberate destruction of universities and hospitals, apart from the deliberate planning among prominent members of the governing coalition in Israel for the post-war redevelopment of Gaza as a beach resort for Israelis, I want to draw your attention to a story that was recently reported in 972 an online journal founded by four justice-minded Israelis. According to 972, in the first months of the war, the IDF began using a tracking program codenamed Where's Daddy to track the movement of those who have been identified as low-level Hamas militants. The name of the program is presumably meant to be funny. For what the program does is follow the militants through their day and then provide an alert when they return home at night so that they can be targeted in their homes. Along with the employment of the program, the IDF has revised the laws of engagement to define the deliberate killing of 15 or even 20 non-combatants, women, the elderly, children, as allowable and proportionate collateral killing in the case of the lowest level fighters. Up to and over 100 civilian deaths is deemed an acceptable toll in the case of the targeting of higher up fighters. It is, put simply, a great deal cheaper to use a 2,000 pound unguided bomb to target an entire family than it is to employ more expensive munitions to target low level operatives. In closing, I want to quote the words of Ben Arad an 18-year-old conscientious objector facing a prison term in Israel for failing to report for enlistment in the IDF. Arad stated that he was willing to go to jail rather than being forced to participate in what he termed, and I quote, an unprecedented murder campaign, not only against Hamas, but against the entire Palestinian people. 
The killing of civilians in Gaza, he continued. Excuse so, me, Mr. Huh? Johnson, it, if you could, you're about three and a half minutes. If you could just wrap up, please. Uh, I, I got, I have this much. Okay. The hunger, the disease, the destruction of property, in addition to the settlers' crimes in the occupied territories, they all add fuel to the flame of hatred and terror. Fighting will not bring back the hostages. It will not resurrect the dead. It will not liberate the Gazans from Hamas control, and it will not bring peace. I urge you to follow the example of this courageous young man and commit our town to support of ceasefire and the return of the hostages. Thank you. Take Mr. Rosen, and then we're going to go to Zoom for the next, um, we'll go for the next two. Good evening. I'm Mark Rosenthal, Precinct 14. Um, I've lived here since the uh, mid-80s. Like everyone else here, my heart goes out to all the innocent people on both sides of the Middle East conflict. But that doesn't mean that I approve the HRC's proclamation. Remember that Hamas people phoned their mothers to brag about how many Jews they murdered. They were so proud that they, they posted videos. Hamas members put a baby in an oven and roasted it to death because it was Jewish. They shot women in the head while gang raping them and then continued raping their corpses. And Hamas has publicly declared their intent to repeat October 7th over and over and over again. It is absurd to think that Hamas would release the hostages or adhere to a permanent ceasefire just because Arlington tells them to. One has to wonder why the HRC thinks town meetings should weigh in on a war 5,500 miles away but say nothing about the war on Jewish Americans here at home. In Los Angeles, a Jewish man holding a sign supporting Israel was knocked to the ground and killed by a Palestinian. Has the HRC commented on that? A Jewish Yale student, a uh, you know, student at Yale, was stabbed in the eye with a flagpole by a pro-Palestinian. This calls to mind the famous photograph of a black attorney in Boston being attacked by a flagpole-wielding racist. I have no doubt if the HRC had existed during the school busing protests, they'd have condemned that attack. But when the victim is Jewish and it's 2024, the HRC is dead silent. Not long ago, pro-Palestinians put up a website for the purpose of doxing every Jewish institution in eastern Massachusetts. Did the HRC comment on that? When Congress held hearings in December, an MIT student testified that 70% of Jewish students at MIT are terrified of acknowledging that they're Jewish. She spoke of a Jewish student who was doxxed and received countless death threats. He hadn't left his dorm room in weeks. Did the HRC find that worth commenting on? Right here in Arlington, hostage posters have been torn down. Excuse me one second, Mr. Rosa. Could we just have quiet, when we have the speakers talking, if there's people talking in the background, we can't hear it and it's hard for the, the public to hear who are watching, so I appreciate as we have the speaker, if people could be quiet in, 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 in the, re the remainder of the room. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm almost done. Okay. Okay. So right here in Arlington, hostage posters have been torn down. Jewish Arlington school children are being bullied so much that they feel they have to hide their Jewish identities. Has the HRC asked town meeting to approve a proclamation condemning that? Many Jewish Americans I know feel that the U.S. in 2024 is looking uncomfortably like Berlin in 1938. Rather than proposing a proclamation that Hamas is sure to ignore, the HRC would serve Arlington residents far better by addressing the anti-Semitism that is happening right here in our own backyard. I urge the select board to vote no action on this article. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Thank you. Okay, so we'll now turn to Zoom. And then we'll return to the... Sorry.
Good evening. Oh, good evening. I'm sorry, was I called on? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't have your name, so if you could just introduce yourself and oh, I'll stop the clock once you, once you begin. Sure. So, uh, good evening. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Betsy Carlton Giesen. I live uh, in Precinct 9. And I am speaking today as a proud Arlington resident, a parent, a former H AHRC commissioner, a multi-term town meeting member, an active member of First Parish Unitarian Universalist Church, and most importantly, as a human being. Our town has a history of speaking out against injustice, both local and distant, and in taking action against injustice when possible. Now is one of the times when we can and should speak and act specifically against the atrocities happening in Gaza. Gaza's foundational infrastructure has been destroyed creating a multi-facet multi humanitarian crisis. According to the World Food Program, 1.1 million residents are facing, quote, catastrophic levels of hunger with acute malnutrition in 16 to 25% of children in northern Gaza aged 6 to 59 months. In March, the World Bank reported that 62% of housing has been damaged or destroyed, and UNRWA states that 75% of the population has been displaced. The healthcare system has been decimated, with only 11 of Gaza's 36 hospitals even partially functioning. Paired with the absence of clean water, diarrheal and skin diseases and hepatitis are spreading quickly. These issues intersect and worsen by the day. That is why I am asking the select board to join several Massachusetts municipalities and people of conscience across the globe in calling for a ceasefire. Calling for a ceasefire speaks to our federal and state governments to let them know what their constituents want them to do. And it continues Arlington's history of speaking out against injustice. Please vote yes for Warrant Article 5, Arlington's resolution for a ceasefire proclamation to end the atrocities in Gaza and release the hostages. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we call on the next person, the next person in line, if you'd like to come up and sit, uh, we'll do the Zoom call, but. Sure. Good evening. Um, okay. Yeah, you're, yeah if you could introduce yourself and once you start talking, we will start the clock. Okay, great. Um, so I'm Altaf Saadi. I apologize, I'm sick. Um, so my voice sounds a little hoarse. Uh, I'm an Arlington resident, I'm a physician, a Muslim American, and a mother, and I wanted to share my perspective today on why the select board should vote in favor of the ceasefire resolution. Um, so I'll uh, start I've, as with saying that I'm a crier. I cry easily for my patients when I'm happy and when I'm sad, uh, so much so that early on, my preschooler quickly learned to ask, Mama, are those tears happy or sad tears? On October 7th, I cried a lot for the innocent Israeli lives lost. And I've been crying every day since as the death toll in Gaza mounts. Israel has dropped more than 75,000 tons of explosives on the Gaza Strip. As comparison, the nuclear bombs dropped by the U.S. on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan was estimated at about 15,000 tons of explosive explosives. We're talking about five nuclear bombs and counting because the violence has not yet stopped. I have tried to explain to my daughter why mama burst into tears out of the blue while driving her to daycare randomly after dinner or while watching her walk on the balance beam in gymnastics class. I'm not sure how or what to tell her. How do I put into words that Gaza has more children amputees than any time in history and how I was imagining my own daughter with amputated legs and arms? How do I put into words that I was thinking about the children in Gaza eating grass when I was throwing away her leftovers into our compost bin? She now asks when she sees me crying, Mom, are you crying because of people hurting in Palestine? Three months ago, I solicited donations for seizure medications to send to Gaza because a colleague there had shared that both adults and children were dying from easily preventable seizures. I have similarly solicited and distributed donations of medications to Ukraine, to the US-Mexico border. My life's mission has been linked to preserving the sanctity of life. Uh, wherever it may be. This box of seizure medications is still sitting in our garage in Arlington. 
because my contacts at the Red Cross, the UN, and other human rights NGOs have all said they cannot get the medications into Gaza safely. The ceasefire resolution is an opportunity for us to be the adults that not only our children need, but also that the children of Gaza desperately need, to reject the logic of collective guilt and punishment, to absolve the children of Gaza from crimes they didn't commit, to say that our tax dollars should not be spent in a way that enables daily atrocities and to affirm peace. As of today, the cities of Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, and Medford have all passed ceasefire resolutions. For our children and for the children of Gaza, the city of Arlington should join our neighbors, be on the right side of history, and pass a ceasefire resolution. Thank you so much. I hope you're feeling better. Okay. Thank you for making so, this hybrid so that I could join. Sure. Um, okay, we're going to return to the chambers now. Uh, the next speaker is here. Hello, my name is Miley Bloom, and I live at 30 Mill Street in Arlington. I'm speaking today to request that the select board vote in favor of a proclamation calling for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza. As a resident of Arlington, I deeply believe that Arlington should be a town where our neighbors who are being most impacted by the ongoing genocide feel protected and supported by our community in the face of the atrocious violence we are continuing to witness every day in Gaza. We have a responsibility as humans to all the individuals and families who are continuing to suffer unending attacks on their lives and their futures. My heart goes out to all those who are continuing to live under these conditions and to our neighbors who have loved ones in Gaza. I ask that you think of these families today as you make your vote. Like so many residents of Arlington, my mental health has been affected by knowing that my government is actively funding this violence. There have been days on end where my stomach was so tight and knotted that I had difficulty eating. I know to be human is to pay attention to the violence that we are inextricably connected to, all of us. And I ask that you hold this truth with me while making your vote tonight. All human lives are worthy of protection, and I ask you to please do what you can to end, this un end, to end this ongoing genocide. We are looking to you as leaders of our community in positions of power to do the right thing, and please use your power to protect human life and prevent more people from being killed. As a local journalist, I have been saddened by the silence of our state and country in the face of this heavy and terrible violence, this genocide that our tax dollars are supporting and I have also felt hope at watching our community come together to call to an end to all this killing. It is important that we recognize that other cities and towns around us have passed or are in the process of passing ceasefire resolutions. We are walking into an opportunity for Massachusetts to rise, to come together, to say that we value human life and are doing everything that we can to end this violence. Please be a part of this change with us. Please. For the people of Gaza and Arlington, please keep us in mind. Thank you. Next speaker. And, and before it begins, I just want to, we've heard a couple of phones go off as the meeting's gone on. So if you have an opportunity to silence your phone, um, we'd appreciate it. Hi, my name is Avi Bukit. I'm the rabbi and director of Center for Jewish Life in Arlington. Um, I moved to Arlington in 2012 together with my wife to open the Center for Jewish Life. We started off in a, in a storefront. And the first piece of mail that I received at the Center for Jewish Life in 2012, inside was a swastika. Around seven years later, 2019, my home, the rabbi's home, with my children sleeping in it, was attacked by an arsonist not once but twice in a matter of a week. When the FBI got a hold of this man's computer, on the hard drive of his computer was found the elders of Zion, was found documents that were perpetuating old anti-Semitic tropes that connected Jews in America, Jews in Israel, as running the world. The reason why I'm bringing this all up is that while we're talking about what's going on 10,000 miles away, and it's very important to be cognizant of what's going on 10,000 miles away, I just want to bring us back to the local issue, which I believe I'm in front of local officials here, which is that Arlington, there's hate, there's divisiveness, there are many issues going on, not just against Jews, 
but against Muslims, against all types of minorities and people who are suffering. And therefore, my question to you that I put before you today is, is what is passing this motion of a ceasefire, is it going to bring people together or continue to divide them? And despite what we're saying, or what many people over here are saying in the background, this is not a unifying proclamation. This will not unify the town. This will actually bring more division and more hate in the town, and it's already been witnessed by many students that go to the high schools here and to the middle schools. And therefore, I turn to you and say, do not make this mistake. Do not bring this as a stain upon the town of Arlington. Just because other towns have done it doesn't mean it's the right thing. And therefore, and on top of that, if you just turn on the news, and I'm sure all of you have turned on the news across campuses across the United States, just last week, as Jewish students were going to a Seder to celebrate the holiday of Passover, they were told by a like-minded crowd of pro-ceasefire, pro-Gaza crowd, go back to Poland. Jews, go back to Poland. So to, to divide, divide this thing that it's not about Jews, it's about Israel, that's absolutely wrong. From the very beginning, I was in Arlington three years ago, going down Mass Ave, a guy goes down the street, and excuse my language, he pulls down the window and says, fuck you, you Zionist pig. Why? I was wearing the kippah. There is no distinction between Zionism and Judaism. And that is an important thing to note. And therefore, I ask of all of you not to pass this motion. Do not bring this stain upon the town of Arlington, and the Jewish community will thank you for it. Am Yisrael Chai, may the Jewish people forever live on and on. Um, again, before the speaker starts, and, and we have people who are presenting to us for three minutes, you may disagree or agree with what they're saying, but please let them finish the three minutes um, with a, without any verbal comment um, while they're speaking. Just ask for everybody who presents to us tonight. Uh, next speaker. My name is Yelena Emmer, and I would like to thank the select board for listening to me speak. I'm here to speak in opposition to the proposed resolution for a ceasefire. I live in East Arlington with my husband and three children. Resolutions on international issues have no place in municipal government. I am disappointed that the Human Rights Commission has already taken a position on this resolution. As their co-chair noted last, at last week's hearing, the largest category of hate incidents the commission received were instances of anti-Semitism an unintended consequence of the commission's position on the resolution will make it less likely that victims of anti-Semitism will report instances to the commission going forward. The commission's position on the resolution appears prominently on their website. Some victims of anti-Semitism will naturally feel that the commission is not hospitable to their views. You are town leaders with oversight over the, the entire town government, including the police. A no vote will send a clear message to victims of hate crime that their views on international issues will have no bearing on how the town responds to hate crimes, all hate crimes, not just against Jews, against Muslims, against many, many marginalized communities. With a no vote on this resolution, you can make clear that your business before the town has no relationship to your views on international issues. I am a Russian and Ukrainian immigrant. I strongly oppose Putin's war in Ukraine. Some in my community do not share my view, or they disagree on the path to what de-escalization of that conflict looks like. I do not believe, however, that the town should take a position on the Russian-Ukraine war either. Despite my disagreements with immigrants or Americans who support Putin directly or indirectly, it is inappropriate for the select board to condemn these views. As others have noted, the select board has not taken a stand on the war in Ukraine or other international conflicts besides the Hamas and Israel war. Of course, a, U a Ukraine resolution <coughs> excuse me, is not before the, the board today at least. This resolution is especially painful to me. I have a special relationship with Israel, as most Jews do. 
my aunt and cousins have lived in Israel for decades, fleeing anti-Semitism in post-Soviet Russia. I know many people who have recently fled to Israel in response to Putin's war in Ukraine, both Russians and Ukrainians. Many of them proudly joined protests against Netanyahu's government. They joined millions of Israelis who live peacefully among Arabs and Christian neighbors, LGBTQ people, women <coughs> with access to reproductive rights, marginalized communities that are systematically systematically silenced under Hamas thrive in Israel. I'm wrapping up. Okay, thank you. Make no mistake. A ceasefire is not the path to advance Palestinian rights. The only chance for enduring and just peace between Israel and Palestine is to remove Hamas. Hamas does not seek peace. If they did, they wouldn't have broken the last ceasefire in November. They seek genocide through the elimination of the Jewish people in the region. A ceasefire would prevent Israel from defending itself. A ceasefire threatens not just my family's safety, it threatens the hard-won political freedoms of many marginalized communities there as well. If, if, if you could, if. Yep. Thank, um, thank you for Thank you very much. Speak. Okay, so we're now gonna return, we did three in person, we're gonna return to the Zoom. Um, just so I know, and the board knows, Ms. Mar, how, how many people are in Zoom waiting? There are 15 hands right now. I'm sorry, 15? 15. 15. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go three and three the rest of it. It's 7.15 now. I said we'll at least go to 7.15. We will go beyond that, um, but it's at 7.14 now. We will go to 7.30, 7.30 on public on comment. Public comment. It's, three it's minutes. three minutes. And we have a little echo in here right now. Right now. Okay, I don't know if there's a... <laughs> Does somebody else have a computer on that is picking up the audio? Uh, it's clean. Okay. Okay. All right. And if they can do it in one or two, yeah, minutes, so more people. You have speak. three minutes. We have 15 minutes left in total. We'll try to get through as many speakers as we can. Okay. Smart. If we have the next person, we're going to be promoted. If you would just unmute your mic when you're ready to speak. You can start. Is the camera on? Good evening. Camera isn't on, but we can hear you. Hello. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Ken and Barry. I'm an, I'm an older person, but a resident here in Arlington for 18 years. I'm in support of the permanent ceasefire. Uh, it's not asking for much. Actually, much more is needed. We need an end to the 77 years of Zionist land theft, ethnic cleansing, genocide, and terror. We need ultimately a single state where all ethnicities can live peacefully on that tortured land. Right now, the ongoing destruction of Palestine is, as we all know, overtly genocidal. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just focus on one dimension uh, in the operation of the ideology. Now, what we're seeing is constant conflation of anti-Zionism anti with anti-Semitism, the notion that there is an upsurge in anti-Semitism. This is a major weapon of Zionist ideology. And we hear some people saying that they feel threatened or unsafe. In fact, the feeling of being unsafe is not the same as being actually unsafe or physically threatened. So what we are actually hearing from these people is the threat to their beliefs, in this case, the belief in Zionism. Such experience is actually a combination of political belief and actual psychological experience, a reaction to one's belief system with identity baked in for many, many years. So people like us, you know, when we're severely critical, you know, we get accused of being threatening. Uh, so please, I'm asking you, do not be taken in by these claims of anti-Semitism. Real anti-Semitism in this country, the old variety, is in fact no longer sub substantial. Although it, it, you know, it's there are incidents here and there. It exists mainly on the far right. There's no real upsurge in anti-Semitism, which is a nonstop claim by the 
Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, actual anti-Semitism where it does exist. And yeah, there are scattered incidents, pales in comparison with other major hatreds and racisms, including anti-Black, anti-Brown, anti-Muslim, anti-Asian, anti-LGBTQ, and so forth. But the ADL would have us believe that anti-Semitism is the very worst of all the hatreds by far. And this is all echoed by the mainstream media nonstop, all part of the ideological machinery of anti-Palestinianism, and it can work here in Arlington. So I get, I'm giving you this critical perspective. I hope you will consider it. I'll stop here. And I certainly hope that you can, you know, at least support a permanent ceasefire. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Take the next speaker from Zoom. Hello, can you see me and hear me? Yes, we can. If you could just introduce yourself and then we'll start the clock. All right, thank you so much. Um, pulling up my, my little speech. Um, thank you to the, the select board. My name is Jennifer Mansfield. I've been a resident of Arlington for the past 14 years. I am a part of a far reaching Jewish American family and I'm also a precinct nine town meeting member. I'm speaking in support of Warrant Article Number 5, and I urge the Select Board to support this resolution. I'm also speaking on behalf of several Arlington Jewish Israeli families who also support the spirit of this resolution. When my third grader told me he thought he recognized the flag of Portugal being waved in Arlington Center earlier this week, it opened up an opportunity. Sorry, he's watching me. He had already heard bits and pieces about the Israeli government's war with Hamas, especially as it has affected close families and extended family. This time I talked with him about all of us within Arlington and all of us across the world who want to put humanity ahead of government and humanity ahead of a painful past. We talked about Israel and the Jews who live in Israel, including many good friends and extended relatives. And we talked about the current government in Israel, which is making intensely hurtful decisions. I explained that the flag he saw was a Palestinian flag representing Palestinian people who used to live in all of current Israel and whose current government is also making intensely hurtful decisions. I emphasized repeatedly, the government is not the people. The people are not the government. We don't hate people from other countries because of their leadership, and we hope others don't hate Americans when our leadership fails us. When our tax money supports Israel's military assault on civilians in Gaza, it is relevant to us as a town. When we have family, friends, and fellow humans affected by the aggressions in Israel and Palestinian territories, it is relevant to us as a town. When our children are absorbing the news and rightfully expecting their adults to frame it for them, it is relevant to us as a town. Besides being a resident and parent, I am also an early childhood educator in town, and even the four and five-year-olds in my class know that hurting someone who has hurt you only makes the problem bigger. It doesn't make it go away and never solves the problem. Standing the flames or ignoring the flames doesn't make it go away. Standing up in the name of humanity is always the right thing. I hope that the select board honors the tenant of this golden rule and votes in support of this Warren article. Please support us in voting for this resolution that honors us as residents, Americans, and humans who value the dignity of life. I truly believe our children are paying close attention and it is our duty to model for them what we value in this world. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay, we'll take one more for Zoom, then we'll return to the room. I don't think we can. Good evening. Oh, if you can unmute your microphone and just introduce yourself, and then we'll start the clock. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. My name is Nadia. I've been a resident of Arlington for over 10 years now. And respectfully, I ask that you do not back the resolution for a ceasefire proclamation. You've heard from many people who support this proclamation. You also heard from many people who oppose it. To me, clearly, there is no broad agreement or uniform support for this proclamation. I therefore do not believe that this proclamation faithfully represents the body of people in this town. I do hear and I listen closely to the strong voices backing this resolution. The situation in Gaza and in Israel is horrific. Speaking out and acting on the situation are fully justified. Please continue doing so. Do it as individuals, do it as part of organized groups. 
but I expect and I hope that the governance of Arlington dedicate itself to town matters. A local government body can act on incidents that are related to the situation in Gaza and in Israel, but the proclamation is not acting. It is declarative. It has little impact nationally and even less internationally, but it has the local consequence, which is much bigger, of dividing the people of this town. Please do not back the resolution on a ceasefire proclamation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next person. Hi, I am Reverend Erica Richmond. I speak as a resident and a clergy member within the town of Arlington. I serve as the parish minister at First Parish Unitarian Universalist, just one block from here. I'm also part of Boston's Interfaith Ceasefire Coalition, a spiritually grounded community organizing group working across difference for change. As a person of faith, I am heartened when I see our town do our part to make this world a more peaceful and just place for all people. I wanna thank each of you for your service, for surely leadership is a challenging but worthwhile endeavor. I appreciate how measured this article is, how it pays attention to the rising reality of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. We certainly do have a lot of local work to do. I believe that we are capable of addressing those local issues and the violence in Palestine and Israel. We can do both at the same time. As the conflict in Palestine and Israel continues, it is important that our global community speak out. This is especially true since the United States has funded and supplied Israel's militarism. Hostages need to come home and the violence against Palestinian people needs to end. While I speak as a person of faith, this is an issue that is bigger than religion. It is a concern for our common humanity. I ask you to vote in favor of Article 5, this ceasefire resolution. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you very much. My name is Jordan Weinstein, and I've lived uh, on, I live on Lennon Road, and I have so, uh, done so for 20 years. I grew up as an Orthodox, in an Orthodox Zionist household. At dinner, we often talked about the Holocaust, but more often, we talked about and discussed Israel and the wonderful things it was doing in the barren desert of the Middle East. We bought Israel bonds. We planted Israel trees, or trees in Israel. I attended a group called Young Judea, a Zionist youth group that prepared young Jews to travel to Israel to work and live. In fact, both of my older brothers took time off from college to work and live on a kibbutz for two years. I learned that supporting Israel was part of being a good Jew, and that any criticism of Israel was a criticism of Jews as a whole and was anti-Semitic. Interestingly, during the Vietnam War, criticism of the war was considered un-American. But I'm among a growing group of uh, tens of thousands of Jews across this country and here in Arlington who've learned to separate being Jewish from blindly supporting the state of Israel. The state of Israel has to date killed more than 35,000 Gaza civilians, two-thirds of them children and women, with thousands more likely to die in Israel if they pursue or uh, die in Gaza if Israel pursues every last Hamas fighter in Ramallah. All of this slaughter and destruction is made possible with American dollars, and I believe this conflict just fans the flames of anti-Semitism. I ask all of you tonight, Mr. Hurd, Mr. Helmuth, Mr. DeCourcy, Ms. Mahone, and Mr. Diggins, to please have the moral courage to support the ceasefire resolution before you. Do it because it's the right thing to do, do it despite the likelihood that you'll be unfairly condemned as anti-Semites. Do it and know that you'll have my support and the support of so many in this community who pray for the slaughter and the genocide to end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. Yeah. I brought my stopwatch. <laughs> 
Uh, my name is Sarah McKinnon. I'm a town meeting member from Precinct 20. And I'm speaking today because I want to explain how this statement isn't intended to be a one and done statement. Um, it's part of a process. The process began when some members of the community went to speak to the AHRC and asked for a statement, which AHRC has done in the past, but is reevaluating as whether it's effective or not. And so we developed a process. It's a new process. It's a very imperfect process. And this is not the end of the process on May 8th. We had listening sessions. It had over 100 members of the community spoke. Over 100 people wrote letters. Um, it had challenges around Shabbat and around Ramadan, and it will be improved. What came out of that was the AHRC report, which I imagine you've all read. The AHRC report comes directly from the community. It has ideas, it has action, it has ways in which to directly engage with many people throughout the community, whether they're Islamic or Arabic, or uh, sorry, or Arabic or Jewish, anyone who needs to be able to have their experience, have their pain, have their anger, and also be able to be in community. One of these suggestions was this resolution. And I hope you'll consider and pause for a moment. Why did the AHRC endorse it? They didn't need to. They could have come out with this report and said, we're just doing ideas and actions. And I think that what described it best for me was what one of the members of the commission said, is that this can feel like we're rocking the boat between people who are really far apart, and it's going to tear us apart. But that actually, this particular resolution was written out of the listening sessions to create a broad boat. It's trying to speak about human rights. It's trying to speak about human dignity. It's trying to give Arlington a place to ground ourselves and root ourselves in hopefully common values and hopefully unconditional belief in both human rights and human dignity. We don't have a secular place, a temple or a church or a mosque that's for the people. And so we have to somehow hold this between each other. The AHRC has initiated with the DEI Commission the first beginning of endorsing and building this new plan, this new process. You are being invited to help hold the process. Town meeting is being invited to help hold the process. And the people of Arlington can help hold the process. If we can find ways that we connect ourselves and ground ourselves, no matter what the issue is, whether it is very hyper-local or connected to the outside world, this is a way that we can take a resolution of our commitment to something that hopefully supersedes or underlays all of our value systems. I hope you will consider this as part of the process and seriously consider the work that has gone into a longer term process than just a simple statement. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It, it is now, it's now 7.31, so we are beyond the time, the outside time that uh, I said we would take. So I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut off the public comment period, um, both on Zoom and in person here. Again, because of limitations on timing, there's nothing nothing further we can do. I am now going to turn it back to the board for comments um, and, and comments, motions, any or any discussion. And um, I'll start with Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to all who took the time to um, speak with us tonight and to email us. Everyone I've heard from is speaking from the heart, is speaking for peace and safety for everybody, both abroad and here at home in Arlington. I'm going to propose something new to my colleagues. Um, and I ask everyone's uh, patience as I explain why. I'm going to move that the select board report to town meeting on this article without a recommended vote. First thing I'll say is explain what effect this would have if the board supports this motion. If the motion succeeds, it will have no effect on the ability of town meeting to vote on this resolution. The effect will simply be that the moderator can recognize a main motion on the floor of town meeting, most likely from the proponents of this article in the form of the resolution now before us. So I'll first explain why I'm making the motion, and then I'll explain to my colleagues why we can do it. Before I do, I want to state 
unequivocally that this motion is completely unrelated to how seriously I have considered everyone's comments, and it is absolutely unrelated to taking a position on the merits of the resolution. And in fact, my point is I don't believe the select board should take a position on the merits and should be as clear as possible in making that known to town meeting. For me, the events in Israel and Gaza since October 7th have been indescribably horrifying and heartbreaking. The anguish I have heard in these hearings from speakers from all viewpoints is real and compelling. I feel deeply for the Arlington residents whose lives are touched by these events and the consequences, including feeling less safe here at home and less welcome. I hope that our process in these hearings, which is available to the public in the form of emails sent to the board and video of these hearings, will be helpful. But Select Board's role on Warren Articles is, in my view, to advise town meeting on Warren Articles within its purview, things we have special knowledge and expertise about regarding town governance. It is our custom and our responsibility to recommend a vote to town meeting based on that expertise. This resolution addresses a situation of great importance, but it is a question of how town meeting feels about it, not how the select board feels about it. It is up to town meeting and town meeting alone to decide whether it wants to speak on this issue and what it wants to say. Town meeting resolutions by their very nature are the voice of town meeting, not the select board. Town meeting resolutions are a request for those 252 individuals, 12 from each precinct, to say something on behalf of the meeting and behalf of the town. The five members of this body should not presume to have advised 252 town meeting members about which, opinion, excuse me. About excuse which me. opinion to corporally express on an issue, however important it is, that does not specifically concern town governance, town operations, town policy, based only on our personal views, whatever they may be. I think for that reason, we have been on a path in, in this board in the last few years that I've been on the board where we have expressed continuing doubts about any resolutions before us that are not binding, especially the ones that don't specifically address what Arlington should do as a government. Um, and what we've been doing on these pretty consistently since I've been on the board, for the most part, is recommending a no action vote, saying that, hey, we're not saying this is a bad idea, we're just saying town meeting shouldn't even be discussing it. The problem with doing that is it's really hard to recommend no action without seeming to take sides on the merits of the issue, and that's my point. I don't think we should take sides on matters where we have no... Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. It, I ask everybody to be quiet in the room so that Mr. Helmuth can speak. I thank you. I don't think that we should take a side on matters about which we have no specific local expertise in our role as the policy board for Arlington's government services. Town meeting will have the opportunity to consider this. Excuse me. Okay, that's twice. We can't have this back and forth. We had our public comment period. It is now time for the board to speak. I'm sorry if you disagree, but if you could please not interrupt the speakers. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be brief. Oh. Excuse me, excuse me. If we can please let the board members speak at this point. We finished the public hearing point. I know this is a very, it's an issue that is very important to a lot of people, but let's allow the speakers to go ahead. You know, it's important for me, the town meeting understands that if the board supports my motion, this does not disempower town meeting in any way to consider this. Um, and I think that is a good thing. I think this is town meeting's job. I think town meeting is well served when we advise them on matters that we know about, specifically in our expertise. I don't think it's especially well served if five people draw from their own personal opinions about matters outside of that expertise to advise 252 people what to say as a body, especially when the community is divided. So that said, since the moderator has indicated that he does not plan to have a traditional floor debate on this article, I do hope there's value in what we have done, the work we've done in this hearing and in the communications from our town. Um, in that town meeting members and members of the public can watch video of these hearings. They can read the correspondent that's been posted to our site and they can make their own decision. It's too important to me to try to put my foot on the scale. 
Now, as to my colleagues, to my colleagues as to why we can do it, um, I've had conversations with town council. Um, there's nothing in the bylaws, the town manager act or state law that requires us to develop a recommended vote. It's been traditional that we do so. Uh, we have the option to submit one. We have the privilege for that recommended vote to be the main motion before the meeting if we do it. Uh, but there's actually no obstacle to putting a motion before town meeting if we do not issue a recommended vote. One example of this is uh, when we elect the assistant moderator. There's no main motion on the floor. We don't do one. Someone does one from the floor. So um, there is a main motion from the floor, but it's in the absence of a recommended vote. Um, town council is available if, if my colleagues have questions on it. Um, I've certainly talked long enough. I want to see what the rest of my colleagues think. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Allen. And just to be clear on the motion, yeah. that the motion is to report to town meeting. To report to town meeting um, on this warrant article without a recommended vote. Okay. Okay, for discussion, do we have a, a second from? Uh, I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Other board members like to wish to speak? Well, I'll say. Mr. Yeah, Diggins? Thank you. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Excuse me, Mr. Weinstein. You know better. Excuse me, the board is speaking now. Well, we, if it weren't for that motion, we, 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 I was going to abstain, we, as I have been inclined to do for um, resolutions and proclamations. We, uh, we, I really do think it is something that should go before town meeting without any bias uh, from the select board. And in this case, we, for me, we, I see both sides. We, and we, I'm not clear we, which advice to give. Uh, to town meeting, and rather than give them potentially bad advice, I mean, I'd rather give no advice because I feel that each of those town meeting members are excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Diggins, it, it, excuse me. Okay, this is several times. All right, excuse me. All right, I'm going to call a short recess because if we can't do our business here and have the back and forth, I'm sure I'm, I'm, we're going to take a short recess. Okay, we're on a, a very limited time frame here, okay? So in light of the, excuse me, back of the room. Thank you. We're in a very limited time period here. Before we adjourned, there was a motion made by Mr. Helmuth that was seconded by Mr. Diggins. And if, let me just explain where we are right now, and I'll, I'll turn to <laughs> town council for confirmation as well. The motion was to vote to report to town meeting on the warrant article without a recommendation. Now, when we first started this process, we talked about options for the board. I just want to run through those in light of this motion because there's, there's essentially three possibilities now depending on the outcome of this vote. If the board moved favorable action on the resolution, the resolution would be before town meeting with the board's recommendation. If the board moves no action on it, then there is nothing before town meeting and it would require a substitute motion in order to put the resolution before. Given Mr. Helmuth's motion, and I'll turn to Attorney Cunningham for confirmation, the effect of a no report is that the resolution itself from the proponent becomes the main motion before town meeting. So it does not require a substitute motion. It is not the board's motion before town meeting. Attorney Cunningham, if, if there's anything you want to add to that, I just want to make sure I'd, that was correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That is correct. It's my expectation that the moderator would recognize the proponent or somebody from the proponent's perspective and that that would be the main motion the resolution has drafted. Okay. So that answers that question earlier. We will confirm that with the moderator. Okay. So that's where it is right now. So we've had a, a motion that has been seconded. Mr. Diggins was not, I don't think you were able to complete your thoughts. It's, it's complete enough, especially okay. given, given the time. I mean, so, okay, so all right, have, all uh, right. In 747, oh. other board members, any comments or? Okay. Um, I'll just say very briefly in light of the time, um, as the chair and the board does, we truly do thank you for coming out. Please keep in mind that, and I saw it during when speakers were up here, there was a very few people who didn't agree that really weren't li listening and also weren't being respectful. 
And I hope as we move forward, move forward at a town, as a town, instead of someone who doesn't agree with us, that we treat them disrespectfully. I think it's better to be respectful, try to get to know that person, and try to understand what they're saying and see if they'll listen to what you're saying. So, but I'm prepared to vote. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And, and again, the special town meeting is on May 8th. We will have a report for town meeting prior to that date, depending on the outcome of this vote. So we have a, had a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins, uh, all in favor of a vote to report to town meeting on the warrant without a recommendation, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that is the vote on Article 5. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, um, and, and I may suggest to the board, um, we have final votes and comment. We will be hearing Article 4 next Monday. Given the time frame here, um, I'd entertain a motion to table the final vote on Move Article the table. 2. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion has been made by Mrs. Mahan to table, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. New business? Uh, Ms. No Mark? New business. Attorney Cunningham? No new business. Mr. Feeney? No new business. Mr. Diggins? Nope, no business. Mrs. Mahan? No, thank you. Mr. Helmuth? No new business. Mr. Hurd? No new business. And I have no business. No new business. Motion to adjourn. Um, second. Okay, motion to adjourn made by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.